The fact remains that seaweed offers great potential for a green industry. Researchers at the University of Malaya in Malaysia are working on a research project that is paving the way for the commercial production of pulp and ethanol from seaweed. The team have developed the technology and gotten a patent to get pulp from red seaweed they harvested from South Korea. The team only cooked it at 100 degrees Celsius for two hours using only water. The reason they say is that the red seaweed has no lignin, unlike the species used at the Mountain Top University. In as much as in pulp, and, uh, to a large extent, we don't really need the lignin. But there are other uh, uh, um, processes that lignin can be utilized. For now, we may say we don't need the lignin, but lignin synthesis could be used for other products. There are phenolic materials. They are polymeric materials. They have a way of <laughs> uh, um, shielding the cellulose. But we have to break them down to release the cellulose fiber. So during the pulp, in both the lignin, the cooking liquid, and the structures, they all formed, they are left behind as the, uh, the cooking liquid, what is left. But our main entrance is the uh, the fibers, which is the cellulose. But these scientists say the good news is that this seaweed is known to absorb far larger quantities of carbon dioxide than land plants. The process by which pulping is produced from it is far more environmentally friendly than the process of making wood pulp. Land is already in shortage because of population growth. Arab land is decreasing as our forests Experts warn it is time to stop cutting down trees to make pulp and paper. They call seaweeds as the material for the future. The process is sustainable, they say. It presents no conflict with tropical rainforests because the seaweeds grow on the waterways. And as they grow, they photosynthesize size and remove carbon from the environment. They argue that a business that is cultivating large areas of seaweed is removing carbon and can, in fact, sell carbon credits to make money. And seaweed is very good at removing excess nutrients from water, which helps clean the sea. The researchers at the Mountain Top University is hoping to scale up soon, although they are mindful of the challenges they face. You know, here we consume a lot of papers. For example, writing papers, writing notes, writing reports, and we buy a lot of this paper. Once we start producing, and it's of standard, and we use it, of course, we will use our own first, you know, to experiment. And then buying will be reduced. And once we are satisfied, everything is all right. Then we start producing more to sell. The paper we have made, um, we could use it for packaging, like the unbleached craft pulp. You can see, it's just like, we, the unbleached craft pulp is like castle. Just roll the paper if you want to make it in large quantity. While the bleached one, uh, you can use it for uh, new sprints based on the, the additives to increase the strength properties and the tensile properties. You can really do some morphological properties, strength properties of the fiber to determine the best use that each of the papers can be used. But no paper is a waste. You can also do a combination of these, uh, the types of paper you have done, either from the short fibers, the long fibers, you can get paper from the seaweed, you can get paper from the sawdust, and mix them under stock preparation to get any particular uh, desired product one Those who monitor the paper industry in Nigeria said the reality is that Nigeria is not yet in a position to manufacture paper in a commercially viable way without dependency on imported pulp. The country is probably about 10 years away from producing paper from pulp because it lacks sustainable raw material resources, apart from the operational, technical and infrastructural challenges. 
Experts say there is no forest in the country that has pulp wood in sufficient quantities to meet the demands of the paper industry. The solution is for the state government to begin to take a critical look at the use of forest and to urgently address the issue of deforestation. About 90% of papers used to produce newspapers in the country are imported. As at 1990, the Okuiboku paper plant was producing 31,581 metric tons of newsprint, reducing the country's importation by 12.7%. But it was shut down in 1993 before its completion and was consequently sold. The Nigerian paper mill, which used to produce 42,960 tons of craft paper as of 1986, is the biggest of them all. The Nigerian Newsprint Manufacturing Company was established to produce fully bleached pulp for production of 68,000 tons of various grades of fine printing, printing and cultural papers on an annual basis. Reports say that with initial dependence on imported long fiber pulp, the mill was planned to produce long fiber pulp from pino species established in plantations in different locations in the country. But from inception, it has tottered ceaselessly due to equipment installation delays. Another key challenge faced by the investors is their inability to source long fiber trees. Here in Nigeria, most of the tropical region, we have short fibers. While in the western world, where you have a lot of soft a wood, if you're talking about the wood products, you have your long fibers, you can actually mix them. But the seaweed, Waste contain a lot of long fibers. For, we are trying to look at the similarities between the fibers that we obtain from the sawdust and the fibers obtained from the seaweeds. The seaweeds contain a lot of long fibers. Even the, the, the pulp yield from the seaweed is high above the pulp yield obtained from the sawdust. Seaweed, previously the unwanted guest at your beach party, is now increasingly associated with sushi, superfoods, spa treatments, and among scientists at least, solutions to climate change. Even invasive plants like the water hyacinth, which has caused so much problems in Nigeria, has been found to be useful. Water hyacinth thrives in a polluted water body. The research showed that the roots of this plant can actually trap um, pollutant like nitrogen, lead, mercury and um, when you wake up in the morning you see it very blossom and it will all cover the water bodies. Sometimes anybody that wants to maybe do something on it, it will be so crowded. So that's why it can act as a disturbance. 